Welcome one and everyone to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 331. I am your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn here as always, with my suspenders set to maximum stun. I've got a fantastic show for you all today, but uh, with a few changes. So let me start by saying that uh, I'm not going to be smoking cigars regularly on the program anymore. Um, I will still smoke cigars on occasion, but it will not be every week. And the reason for that is practical. <clears throat> the practical reasons are that it's cold and rainy outside right now, and it's a pain in the butt to try and get mobile streaming set up in my car, and that time and energy can be used on other things like playing with my kids before the show and stuff like that. So, um, as much as I love a good cigar, and as much as you know I love a good cigar, I won't be smoking every single week, but I still may smoke on occasion, depending on if I'm in the mood or not. So just to set expectations going forward. Andy the DK says, need a new show name, Ox and Scotch? <laughs> um, that does have a good ring to it. But I probably won't be changing the show name because I've been doing this show with this name for six years. And um, I don't want to have to reforge brand recognition and all that jazz. So we'll keep it as it is. Lots of cool people in the chat again today. Imagine Justin, the Gentleman Badger, Hawkstar, Cigar Watch, Ox, Ulfer17, Andy the DK. Everyone is here today. Ghoul Breath, we've got the entire crew. Good to see you all. Cigar Ox says, no problem, I'll smoke it for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Although I don't... Is it called a hit when you're smoking a cigar? Or even a toke? I don't even know. The Gentleman Badger asks, How was your vacation? Pardon me. <clears throat> I had a bunch of burps all at once. So, uh, there we go. How was your vacation? My vacation was very nice. I was gone for an entire week last week. To Kentucky! That's right, my family is from Kentucky. Well, my wife's family is from Kentucky. And every year... I fly to Kentucky to uh, visit my wife's family. Imagine Justin says, does this mean my gift for cigars for you is no longer going to be required, my friend? That is not what it means. I always accept your cigars because I do smoke cigars on occasion when the camera's not rolling. Not as frequently as I once did because I can't smoke indoors anymore, as you know. But every now and then I'll go on a nice long ride in my car and smoke a cigar after work. Um, but it's just not quite as frequent as I used to. And setting up streaming on Periscope for it is a time-intensive, frustrating affair, so I, that's why I'm not going to be streaming um, the show while smoking cigars very much from here on, on out. But if you, if you still want to send me cigars, I will still appreciate them, and I will still smoke them, and I might even smoke them on the program. Uh, anyway, the vacation was great. Got to see a lot of family. Got to go to the Newport Aquarium. Uh, Cincinnati slash Kentucky has a very nice aquarium called the Newport Aquarium. And uh, I got to take my family there. Got some nice photos. And it was very nice. All right. Let's see. Where to begin? So much has happened. So, uh... Three cheers to Damon LaRue, who donated for me to purchase the latest expansion of Hearthstone. So I purchased it a few days ago, and I've already finished the two campaigns that they've got in there. And I have a few new cards, but I haven't bothered to put them into my decks yet. So don't worry, when you fight me today... The decks are still the same old decks that I've always had, even though I do have the expansion now. Uh, but the expansion's pretty fun, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I whipped through them really quickly. I recall that when I had to sit down to do the Black Rock Mountain expansion, 
and the uh, Naxxramas that I had to make all of these decks over and over and over again, and I had to Google deck building strategies for clearing the wings, and with this, every, I, I defeated each boss the first time with just my regular Shaman deck. So I'm not sure if the difficulty is very challenging, but it's still fun, and I enjoyed it. The Gentleman Badger says, after that brutal Reno Jackson play last week, I felt it was only right. Glad you enjoyed the expansion. <laughs> that was a brutal Reno Jackson play last week. And I did get that card because it was the first gift after clearing the first wing, if I recall. Uh, so easy to get. So thank you for that one very much. Uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. Okay, let us move on. To some news. First up, I have been working hard in my limited downtime. Goldbreath says, just tavern brawls this week, or can we face you in regular matches? You can face me in regular matches if you really want to, but I do enjoy tavern brawls, because uh, this week's tavern brawl in particular is really challenging. If you watched the video that I posted yesterday, um, it took me a while to figure it out. And I, I saw at least one comment on YouTube that said, it said something like, I usually love everything Oxhorn, but Oxhorn's failure at basic English comprehension really annoyed me. <laughs> and I saw that and I'm like, well, it's fair. That's fair. I had a hard time figuring out this Hearthstone battle. Battle. Tavern Brawl. But I finally figured it out, ladies and gentlemen, and I am ready and eager to face you all in this week's Tavern Brawl. It should be a lot of fun. But if you want to do a traditional classic challenge, we can do that too. Cigar Ox says, only 15 days left before Star Wars 7. And I'll get to see it for free. Well, congratulations, Cigar Ox. I don't know how you rate being able to see it for free, but I am happy for you. The Gentleman Badger says, There's a new Murloc Legendary that gives your hero power. In this case, in the case of a Shaman, it gives you a hero power that's not terrible. That's good to know. I look forward to seeing exactly what those are. Anyway, I've been busy this week in my limited free time. Uh, doing product reviews and all sorts of stuff. If you've been subscribing to me on YouTube, you'll have seen a few of these, and I want to play one for you right now. It's about four minutes long. Let me see if I can... There we go. I just got this beard grooming kit through the mail from the Detroit Beard Grooming Company. Can you hear? It comes complete with five different beard oils and this really nice stainless steel comb. I've been eating a new comb and I've been dying to experiment with some new beard oils. So let's crack this thing open and see what's inside. The kit comes inside this nicely sealed tin with a window so that you can see exactly what's on the inside. Hold on a minute. I can't. This won't do. I've got to have this at maximum Many of quality. the versions that I've seen online have uh, had a one ounce flask vial inside instead of all of these half an ounce vials. But this particular one that I got, they're all half an ounce vials and they seem to fit well. I gave each of these beard oils to my wife to see whether or not she liked them. She has a really good nose for scents and she can pick out things that I can't. Plus, I think it'll be useful if buyers understand what these beard oils are going to smell like once you apply them. My wife described Orchard Lake as smelling rather citrusy. She mentioned lemon specifically, but it's the orange essential oil that's in this beard oil that she detected. I then gave her Cedar Springs and she said, quote, it smells kind of woodsy? What she was smelling there is the cedar wood essential oil. This is a very woodsy smelling oil. Then she tried Corktown and this was a little bit more complicated. She said it smelled like vanilla. It smelled kind of sweet and it also smelled woodsy. And uh, that's because it's got cedar wood in it, just like the Cedar Springs. It does have vanilla, and then it also has tobacco premium fragrance inside. 
That's the sweetness that she detected. This has become one of my favorite oils, as you all know, because I like smoking cigars. So Corktown is my personal favorite. When she tried Mackinac, she said that it smelled like the inside of a peppermint patty. And that's because this one has cedar wood, but it also has peppermint essential oil, and it's pretty strong. She said she really enjoyed it. Finally, she tried downtown, and she said this was the most complicated one for her, and she really couldn't place it. And I pressed her, and I said, well, if you had to pick something, how would you describe it? And she kind of shrugged and said, smells kind of like tea? And uh, that's because I don't believe this has a very strong essential oil in it. It has a lot of the carrier oils that all of the other ones had, including wheat germ, sunflower, avocado, apricot, sweet almond, and vitamin E oil. So this downtown beard oil is going to be fairly neutral. It doesn't have an overwhelming scent. And it's going to be useful for those who are mainly interested in the conditioning agents within beard oil and are not looking for a scent. For the longest time, I've been using this beard comb that's made out of ox horn. And for those who know my alternate identity, you're going to know why I liked it so well. But as you can see, it's really fragile. Animal horn is fragile for making combs out of, even though it is a traditional material. As you can see, I've already lost a few teeth out of this one from dropping it. And that's the benefit to using a stainless steel beard comb like this one that the Detroit Grooming Company has created. This particular one is not credit card sized, it's a fully fledged comb. And it also comes fully equipped with a bottle opener, which of course is important for the bohemian bearded man on the go. It has a little hole in the top left hand corner, which I'm assuming is for a key ring, uh, but this comb is so large that I can't imagine anyone using it on their keys. Overall, I think it's a great beard kit. It comes with five different vials of beard oil for you to experiment with. So if you've never used a beard oil before and you kind of want to test some out to see what flavors and scents work best for you, this is a good one to start with. And the comb that comes with it is excellent. It's going to last a very long time. I've already started using it and like it much better than the previous one I had. Uh, plus you can do neat tricks with it like this. That's right, I'm developing a new trend, ladies and gentlemen. You've heard of the Afro pick. Now you've seen the beard pick. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> so that was one of the different uh, experiments that I've been working with lately. So for those of you who know, uh, I do have a little side business where I, I run growabeardnow.com. And on that website, I review beard related products and a bunch of other stuff. And sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes, <laughs> Andy the DK says, great review, Ox, plus I'm digging the hat portrait. Yeah, that's on my wall over there. Uh, thanks very much. I've had that for years, and I just now put it back up on the wall. But uh, beard vendors, beard product vendors, will come to me and uh, pay to put their advertisements on my website, or they'll ask me to do a review of their product. And uh, that was the case in, uh, with that last one. They wanted me to review their product in times for, for Christmas. So I did that, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I also did one on how to wax a cotton jacket. Uh, uh, I'll show you a brief excerpt from it really quickly. Um, I'm not going to show you the whole thing because it's 13 minutes long. But basically the gist of it goes like this. For the longest time, uh, people would would apply various... Uh, Nightbot... Sorry, I don't know how to untime you out, Elizabeth. I'm sorry about that. So... <laughs> Oh, you hit the caps. Okay, yeah. Nightbot banned you for a brief period of time, Elizabeth. Sorry about that. Anyway, so the, the basic gist of it goes like this. In the olden days, we're talking the early 1900s, um, the only way to waterproof your jacket was to apply uh, a certain type of wax to it. Sometimes they would use beeswax, or they would use petroleum wax or something like that. And um, w what you would do is you would take a cotton jacket and you would wax it and then the wax would dry in the garment and you would change the color of the garment slightly but it would become completely waterproof and the rain would just drizzle off nowadays of course we have synthetic materials and man-made fibers that are waterproof but they lack the same feel that natural fibers used to and uh, they also make you sweat and they're just not as uh not as nice in my opinion so I uh, recently purchased a new jacket and I waxed it and I went through an entire video showing off how to do it and let me show you a few excerpts of that. Hey there folks, this is Brandon and with this video I want to show you how to wax fabric. Yeah, I'm just going to skip forward until I can get to the waxing part.
Okay, come on, you two. So that's what this is. Uh, now, the, the thing is, if you buy a jacket... X, make sure that you don't burn the fabric. Don't hold the heat gun in one place over the fabric. Make sure that you sweep it back and forth and keep it always in constant motion. Then, it's the hard part. You just got to get to work. Grab the wax, sit down, or get in a crouched position, lean over your workspace, and dig in. You need to do firm, fast, repeated strokes. The color of the fabric is going to change. There's no getting around that. Your fabric will get darker. Even after the wax dries, the color will change to a darker shade of the original color of the fabric. I found that it was nearly impossible to get very much wax on the fabric in large, broad strokes. Instead, I only found success by doing short, quick, vigorous strokes in a small area. Then, once the wax was applied, I would take the heat gun to melt down any solid wax that had curled up, and then use the brush to spread it out evenly. This is a long, hard project. It was much more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I got tired very quickly and I had to take frequent breaks. Also, some of the more awkward parts of the garment are going to be fairly tricky. For example, seams on pockets, seams between layers of fabric, and buttonholes are especially tricky. Alright, let me I found show you the before and after. To burn your garment, so instead make circular motions, pass it backwards and forwards until the wax melts. Then take out your brush and gently brush it down. Now I want to show you exactly what to expect. Here's a before and after. Here's before, and here's after the waxing and drying. This was a much more complicated All right, so uh, enough of that. I just figured I would show it to you. Now, one funny thing about that video, and I didn't realize it until it was already done, but I used a lot of language and terminology in there that I realized can now be construed um, in, in a bad way. For example, I said things like you need to impregnate the fabric with the wax. You need to have lots of firm, hard strokes. This was a long, hard process. Stuff like that. And when I'm sitting here saying it now, it sounds horrible. But that, at the time, I was completely innocent. I'm just sitting there trying to wax a jacket. And yes, you need firm, hard strokes. And you need to, need to impregnate the jacket with the wax. You know, the word impregnate does not always necessarily need to mean conception. I'm just saying the word has flexibility, but it wasn't until I released the video that people started to message me on YouTube saying, all right, Oxhorn, this is getting a little racy for my tastes. And I'm like, ah, well, that's your own mind, friend. That's your mind and your fault. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, we'll just leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, you know what? I just realized that I haven't poured any scotch. We may be forbidden to use cigars here at Scotch and Smoke Rings, but uh, we are not forbidden to drink scotch. So let us pour us a little bit of the good old scores, babe. <laughs> Poor Trevor Green, I think I might have <clears throat> scarred him or something. Ah, scotch makes the day. All right, so anyway, that's an example of some of the stuff that I've been working on recently. I really enjoy doing product reviews, and so expect to see more of those from me in the near future. Next up, fan art. This comes from Imagine Justin, and he says, Looks like Oxhorn can't wait for Winter's Veil, vale, yet I know I can't wait either. And of course, here's an image of Oxhorn dressed in his Winter's Veil vale garb. Looking very good, Imagine Justin. Thank you for that. Uh, Nathan says, I hate being sexy, but I'm a bearded man, so I can't help it. Welcome to the story of my life. I mean, really. Here's one from Nathan Giles, and it says, This is simply why I'm not vegan. And now I'm hungry. Delicious. Delicious. This one's from Imagine Justin, and it says, Looks like Oxhorn has found himself a moose friend. A new mount that came out on Tuesday. What do you think, Oxhorn? Uh, did we show this off last? No, we didn't. Maybe the week before last. I don't know. But I think it looks very nice. Uh, next up, we've got this from Christina. And it says, Sorry, I haven't been around, but I've been busy with my own stream. And I saw this, and I had to link it. No Shave November. 
I can't do the Wookiee noise. I can't. I added the DK as saying that he 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 posted something late. Let's check it out. From Andy the DK, crispy bacon. Our database is updated with the latest latest Legion build, a new artifact, weapons, and bacon. So this is a legitimate thing. This is a real item. Crispy bacon, item level 700, use. Eat some bacon. Extend the benefit of any well-fed buff from the Broken Isles by one hour up to a maximum of six hours. I can dig it. Good on you, World of Warcraft, for allowing us to eat bacon virtually. Now, this is an interesting one from Jonathan, and he says, Opinions on this? Not so sure it's an idea even worth trying. And of course, the subtext for this is, People are now covering their beards in glitter for the ultimate Christmas look. And then, of course, everyone in the comments is like, This is so stupid. Bearded culture has just gone crazy. All of these left coast hipsters and blah, blah, blah. Look, listen to me. I need to tell you a little something about online marketing and advertising. When you see an article that says, People are doing X, you need to push that aside and interpret it like this. I, the journalist, am writing an article designed to stoke controversy, so I'm going to say people are doing X, even though I've never actually met any people doing X. I'm not going to interview any people doing X. I'm not even going to refer to any sources of these people doing X. I'm just going to share a photoshopped image of a man with glitter in his beard, say people are putting glitter in their beards, and then wait for the controversy to arrive. Because I assure you, no bearded man in his right mind, or even in a crazy mind, would ever put glitter in his beard for one very practical reason. The mustache is directly beneath the nose. Just put yourself through the motion. You put some syrup or some glue on your mustache, then you sprinkle some glitter on it, and then you sneeze. You go, <gasps> and then all of a sudden all that glitter goes right into your sinuses. And now not only do you have to sneeze, but you're continuing to sneeze. Lachu! 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 All this glitter goes flying out. Nobody is doing this. This is clearly photoshopped. Please, don't believe everything that you see on the internet. Richard Mago uh, is sharing with us a great Scotch documentary. Let's check it out. How long is this? One hour and 30 minutes, my friend. Uh, I'm afraid, uh, as amazing as this documentary surely is, I'm afraid we don't have an hour and 30 minutes to go through it. And it looks like it's not loading. So uh, you guys will have to watch that one on your own later. Excuse me. Here's one from Daniel. Because everything's better with the beard. Yes, well, this is true. Batman would be better and much more interesting if, if he had a beard. That's a cool documentary. I'm going to check it out on my own later. Thank you so much. Potisium says, Oxhorn, I can torture you for the next couple weeks with elves dancing on mailboxes. I'm in Stormwind and I just found like 20 elves naked dancing. I'm rolling on the floor. Yes. Well, there is a reason why I included that in the movie. That's because people actually do it. And it's annoying. Poe the Ghost says, It's Portland. Don't underestimate the weird. Keep Portland strange, indeed. Indeed. All right, it is time for your recorded messages. First on the program is the Imagine Justin. Imagine Justin, what would you like to say? Greetings, Ox. Imagine Justin here. Uh, I ain't really having a great day, but uh, what would be the best options to cheer yourself up when you're in a down mood? Well, uh, uh, every, every man's solution uh, is different. And uh, I'll just tell you, I, so I saw a video <clears throat> just yesterday. It was 45 minutes of Nick Offerman sitting in a leather chair by a fire drinking scotch. Silently. That was the entire video. 
Not a word was spoken. He was just sitting in the chair with a glass of, uh, Lagavulin and scotch. Drinking scotch. That's it. That, my friend, is how some people get out of the doldrums. That is how some people get out of the blues. They just sit in a leather chair next to a warm fire, alone with their thoughts and a glass of scotch. Similarly, I would sit with a cigar and maybe watch a nature documentary. Or play with the kiddos. That is how I get out of the blues sometimes. Long day at work. Play with the kiddos. They've got enough energy to make me happy. Now, every, uh, every man has a different solution. Maybe yours is going to be uh, watching uh, your favorite sitcom on Netflix or watching, God forbid, an anime or something. One way you might want to get out of the doldrums is to get out of the house. Maybe go to a coffee shop with a laptop. Maybe all you need is some uh, noise around you and you can do your work around other people and interact with some people and have conversations. And that might be one way to get yourself out of the doldrums. Or call up some family and go to a movie. There are any number of ways, good ways, to, to get out of the doldrums. <laughs> Andy the DK says, oh God, don't trigger Greg Hartung, Oxhorn. <laughs> and uh, Trevor Green says, uh, anime, you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trevor Green says, you triggered me. Oh, no. I've done it now. Now every comment is going to be about anime. Here we go. Just, just look, I'm just glad that the, the worst excesses of my, of my fan base is anime. I mean, it could be bronies. I mean, it could be bronies, right? It could be so much worse. And the worst is that sometimes you watch a little anime. Okay, I'll take that, I'll take that. Could be worse. Next up is Gentleman Badger. You are on the program. Uh, what is on your mind, good sir? Hail, hail, my friend. I hope you're doing well tonight. As usual, I want to ask you a quick little question about Hearthstone. Uh, this week, I want to ask you, what do you think of the new Discover mechanic? introduced in Hearthstone. So far, I think it's one of my favorite mechanics, personally. And um, I think it's pretty interesting. If you haven't had a chance to use any of the cards, um, you know, that you have Discover on it yet, then th there was a Tavern Brawl that pretty much used the same feature. It's where you, you see three cards and you pick one. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, thank you for your thoughts, and stay classy as always, everybody. I was not familiar with the new Discover feature until I purchased um, until I, I was able to purchase the latest expansion, and I am now very familiar with it, and I do like it. It's creative. It's neat that the Blizzard folks are coming up with new ways to uh, to make their game more interesting. Every expansion is, is something new and unique, and I do appreciate that. It means they're not being lazy about it. <laughs> Trevor Green says, Bronies are the worst. I know. <laughs> you don't need to tell me twice. Imagine Justin is on the program. Again, what's on your mind, good sir? Hello there, Oxlorn. Imagine Justin here. I have a question for you. Eggnog, Christmas presents, candy canes, and elf ears roasting on an open fire. Now, Will there be a Christmas special on the week of Christmas? Or will there be something ahead of time? Um, good question. Let me see. What's the calendar look like? So, Thursday is the 24th, which means that's Christmas Eve. <laughs> probably, I probably will not be doing anything on Christmas Eve. So, yeah, I'm going to have to come up with maybe a day before. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We've got a few weeks to figure it out, ladies and gentlemen, but we will figure it out. Andy, the DK is on the program. What is on your mind, good sir? And now, ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from Stormwind City. Big Stacks 2 asks, where does one submit these audio files? Uh, it's at speakpipe.com, but you have to have a specific link. So go to my Twitch page, scroll down, and read all of the stuff you see down there. But near the very bottom, there's going to be a link that says, Leave Oxhorn a Recorded Message. Click on that, and you can leave me a message. And now, ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from Stormwind City, 
It's Quick Fire Question! And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is your host with the most, here's Zandy the DK. Thank you, Johnny, and welcome everyone to another exciting episode of Quick Fire Questions. I am your host, Ian the DK, and joining me is our very special guest, Mr. Oxhorn the Bearded Beardsman. How are you, Ox? Hope you're doing well this week, and hope you are staying classy. Ox, are you ready for some quick fire questions? Yes! Hope you are, because here we go. Ox, for the next several weeks, when Scott and Smoke Rings airs, I will be asking you questions, three questions, on how well you know each of the races of Azeroth. And tonight, of course, in your honor, we have the first race, Torrent. Let's see how well you know your own race. Okay. Question number one. Okay. The Torin are in a civil war with the blank clan. Question number two. How many chieftains have the Torin had, and who are they? And question number two. three. Can you name each district Cairn. in Thunder Bluff? Thank you, Ox, for playing, and thank you, everyone, for listening. As always, I am your host, Andy the DK, and reminding you all to get your Murlocs, Spade, and or Good night. There's the Sky District and the Water District, Earth and Fire. Your powers combine. I am Captain Torrin. I have no idea. I have no idea. What were these districts? All right, and finally, Patizium, you're on the program. What is on your mind, good sir? Hello, Oxford. I have a question for you. Since it's getting, since it's getting in December and soon we're going to be hitting Christmas, I have to ask you, which Christmas song is your favorite that you have written for a while? I hope you have a good Thursday. Mm. Drink some scotch, my friend. Which of my Christmas songs is my favorite? Hard. I like them all. Elf ears, oh, roasting on an open fire. I guess that would be my favorite. We three dwarves of iron forged, drink until our bellies engorged. That was also a very fun one. All right, um, Andy the DK says, I saw three rogues. That was a good one, too. I really enjoyed that. I saw three rogues come stealthing into Orgrimmar, to Orgrimmar. To Orgrimmar in the morning. <clears throat> well, I don't, I don't know. Andy the DK, you're going to have to tell me. What the answers were to all of those questions. I know there's Cairn Bloodhoof, and then there's Marin Bloodhoof, something. I don't know. Elizabeth says, I like the crying on We Three Dwarves. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Imagine Justin says, It's beginning to look a lot like this raid isn't going to happen. I love that one too, Imagine Justin says Big Stacks too. But you know what, I think that comes from a time... I, most new World of Warcraft players won't be able to relate to my knowledge. I haven't played recently. Because now you no longer really need... I mean, there's there's not a moment when you're sitting there waiting for everybody to come and you've been waiting for an hour and people said they're going to come but then they don't come so you try to find a replacement but then that replacement drops out and then the raid just falls apart. Due to moments like that, we sit there and go, well, I don't think this raid's going to happen. But now, I don't know if people have that experience. Because they've got that raid app thing that pops up. You can just partner with people on the fly. So, who knows? Maybe that's uh, one of those anachronistic things that people may not be able to relate to in the past. That only Vanilla WoW players will be able to understand. Cigar Axe, it's not very useful to say spoiler alert before you tell them what the spoiler alert is, too. Like if you said, spoiler alert, um, Katniss Everdeen 
makes out with some guy, I'll go, okay. Yeah, I don't care about Hunger Games. Fine, I'll take that spoiler alert. But then if you go, spoiler alert, in Star Wars 7, Han Solo dies! Then I'm gonna go, oh! That's a huge spoiler! How dare you? But when you just go, spoiler alert, and you don't say what genre of thing it's for, then I have no idea. I'm gonna read the entire thing before I understand. And by that time, it's been spoiled. Ah. I made up that thing in Star Wars, by the way. That's not true. At least I don't know if it's true. It could be true, I don't know. But I made it up. I don't want people emailing me angrily, Oxhorn, you spoiled Star Wars for me. You started this rumor that Han Solo dies. I have no idea. <laughs> Big Stack says, I remember the good days of vanilla PvP. Eight hours or more in Alterac Valley, summoning the giants against each other with the rituals. Goodness, those were long, but I must admit they were fun. Raids were a lot smaller than they were in vanilla, says the gentleman badger. 20 men instead of 40. That's very true. Remember the world bosses, anyone, says Talendil? Yes, I have vivid memories of, uh, of the world bosses. In Altrak Valley, what was it? There was this one world boss in Altrak Valley that I kept, that we kept trying to down. What was it? No, it wasn't Altrak Valley. It was, it wasn't Altrak Valley. It was that, as Shara. says Shara. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's time for some Hearthstone. Goodness, this uh, this episode is just flying by. Even Lord Kazak? Man, I don't know. I don't remember. It's been so long. Hold on a second. What is wrong? Okay. There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, where's my window? There we are. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've got we've got our Twitch alerts, we've got our chat, we've got our Hearthstone. Boys, look who it is! Oh, the ruined city is now open. Well, we could go explore that if we really wanted to. Ah. It begins. Ah. Whew. Okay, we finally got into one. At least, I hope. Build your team as you play. Good luck. Man, this caused me so much consternation when I started playing yesterday. Pick a new card. All right. Sure, let's do this guy. Fancy Badger says, good luck. This should be interesting. Indeed, this should be. Chief Smash says, greetings and salutations, ladies and gents, from across the fruited plain and beyond. Greetings and salutations to you, good sir. Fedoro Gregoro says, pant, pant, I made it. What did I miss? You totally didn't miss me making fun of anime in any way. That did not happen. So you can feel free to go and watch the replay of this episode without any fear. We didn't talk about you, and we didn't talk about anime. That was not part of this show. So I'm so glad to have you here. All right, next up, let's see. Cost one for each other minion on the battlefield. Uh, right. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> Big Stacks 2 says I'm on a private server advertising scotch and smoke rings hoping to get some new fans here that's great thank you Big Stacks no no Greg Greg I'm just glad you're here my friend you don't need to worry about you know what might have been said during the show earlier I'm, I'm positive it's all good it's all good Okay, where are we? Fancy Badger. All right, let's see. Chief Smash says beard trim ox. It's looking rather crisp and neat today. Well, thank you. <laughs> I guess that means that it's not very crisp or neat, usually. But I, I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, uh, shoot. Let's see. I did, uh, oh no, did my video crap out? What is with all this lag? Man, I don't understand. Pay attention, class. Whoa, how are you getting these cards? Silence and mm -hmm. All right, let's try that on for size. <laughs> Imagine Justin says, I really wish those chickens were not a thing. I'd rather have them on my dinner plate instead. I take it you're hungry. And that's okay. Who dares summon Oh no! He charged my guy! Interesting. Um, hmm. Whoop, probably shouldn't have done that. I am confuzzled. Thanks for coming, Patricia. I'm glad you were on the program today. Oh my goodness. One guy, the one guy that wouldn't die. <sighs> 
Chief Smash says to know Oxhorn Christmas tunes tonight. Oh, I suppose I should should probably play them. Do I have Spotify? Dude. Oh. Is there music on Spotify? I, think it's I hope I don't have to buy my own music. <laughs> Goodness gracious, Fancy Badger, you are tearing me up. Holy cannoli, the lag. What is with the lag? Why, why, why the lag? What is going on? I've got a huge guy. Oh my goodness. Wow. That was ridiculous. Let's see if I can play my Christmas music. There we go. So Is this feeling a little bit more suffer. festive, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, am I dead? And I'm dead. Nicely done, Fancy Badger. Nicely done. I saw three rogues come stealthing in. Two I saw three rogues come stealthing in. Two they walked into the auction house. In Orgrimmar, They walked into the auction house. In Orgrimmar in the morning. Ah, hello there. They killed the auctioneers with zeal. In Orgrimmar, in They killed the auctioneers with zeal. In Orgrimmar in the morning. All right, cool breath. Pleasure to meet you on the battlefield. My friends and I, we killed them all. In Orgrimmar in the morning. Chief Smash says, I actually sing this song to my sons once in a while for our nightly bedtime rituals. That touches my heart. Thanks for sharing that, Chief Smash. It's Sam Adams' Know Your Beer Facts. Vikings believe that... Oh, but we gotta go through ads. We're going through a Sam Adams ad right beer. now. In unrelated news, our brewery... And I don't know if they're gonna make me... Sam Adams. ...pay... ...to listen it's to Sam it when Adams I upload my, my video to YouTube. Facts. We'll find out. Senosilicophobia we'll is the fear of an empty glass. Luckily, there's an easy cure. Sam Adams Boston Lager. For the love of beer. Boston Beer Company, Boston Mass. Safe and responsibly. What's this? One shot, one kill. Wow, this lag is crazy. Oh. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome, buddy. <laughs> Glad you're enjoying that. Getting all of these cards. I had just I have nothing but chickens. Nothing but chickens. Those human eyes taste right. Hungry orcs with their bellies as boss will feel quite I hope you like my invention. They know that drain I 
taste okay That dwarves and gnomes together make a nice buffet And every human heart, though kind of dry mm. Will taste much better if mixed <laughs> Hey, something happened, but I missed it. What happened? Hey, someone followed me. Oh, that's great. Thanks for following. Goodness, cool breath. Nothing can stop me. Yeah, you just stand it up. Right. Yeah, play it for me, Nathan. Mr. Nathan Allen Bernard on the piano. Sigarak says, along with the music, you could also read the tale of Torlon Hastings. Let's watch both my tale of adventure and seasickness. Get the book for Christmas and Halloween. Indeed you could, if you had taste. All those with taste, they understand a good novel when they read it. you're watching your weight, give some elvish, some elvish blood brew. Christmas classic, Frosty the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman was a jolly happy soul, because he ate jolly happy souls. You see, for a snowman to remain animated, it must replenish its powers with the souls of others. I forgot about this. Which is why he hangs out with little children. Being young, energetic, and they make the perfect Oh no! For a meal. He arrived at a mall filled with teenagers, but there were too many. <laughs> this was it, but he needed a soul separate from others, off on its own, where he could devour it in privacy. At last, he spied a teenager sitting alone against a brick wall. It was an emo teen with black hair, wearing clothes bought solely from Hot Topic. One shot. Ah. So he scurried over to the. Don't worry, loves. The cavalry here. Yeah. The emo teen tilted his head but refused to make eye contact. I hope you like my invention. Said the emo teen. Play is just the foolishness of childhood. The world is a dead place filled with suffering. Leave play to the jocks and cheerleaders. It's their only joy before the inevitable adult world. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, but the sun is out and shining! You need to take advantage of it before It stands out convincing us that life is warm and happy. But the sun doesn't consider the unhappy wife of loners like me. I was born with an ugly complexion. My nose bends slightly to the left, and my elbows are covered in thick fur. I'll just wear my long sweeve shirts and hide in the darkness. Where I belong. But kid, I'm a magical snowman. Things like this don't happen How many of those do you have? Why am I not getting any of these secrets? I have the social skills of a whopping potato. I've always been an outcast, an exile, a blemish on society. I sit alone and curse the world, and have no friends because I sit alone and curse the world. I know that my loneliness is due to my own cowardice and pessimism, but I'm too cowardly. Look, and Lord! Leave me alone. Wait for me. Wait. What? This is the last day of winter. Winter is here. Only a couple of days. And with that, 
frosty lunge to the emo king. I feel my soul okay. and my body being dissolved, but I don't care. I deserve it, said the emo team. At length, the frosty we solidified, and the boy was gone. Frosty breathed deep and exhaled loudly. Ah, so satisfying. I hit the dog. Really? 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 Three! Three! Oh! Ah! Go blimey! Stagnant, murky water, and never return. The world was saved by one stalwart yes. who refused to take pleasure from life in any way. Your plan of positive contribution to the human species done by any emotine in history. The end. All blimey. You will burn. He's got two, well two legs. Ah. Right. Well done. Nicely done. All right, we'll have one or two more. Two can play at that game, literally. Well met. Hello. Greg Hartung. Prepare to be the first person to die to me today. What is that, Sir Finley Murgleton? What is that? Battlecry, discover a new basic hero power. Oh. Okay. That's interesting. that on Strategy. Ooh, what's this? Oh my goodness.
There we go. Had to think about that for a while. I'm slow when it comes to this sort of thing. Now the DK says, what year did you make your Christmas album, Ox? I think it was, uh... It was 2009 or 2010. This uh, tavern brawl uh, has a lot of chickens. Try that. <laughs> Fossadin says, Ox, have you seen Nick Offerman's Yule Log video yet? Best ad for whiskey I've seen. Yeah, I actually talked about it earlier on the show. <laughs> That's pretty great. Uh, something is really going on with me. Try that. All right, this is our first house. You guys ready to do some caroling? You bet, Noob. What about you, Thunk? Turkey! No, not turkey. Turkey comes later. Right now, we're caroling. Do you remember the one we're singing? Uh-huh. Turkey! It has nothing to do with turkey. It's, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Do you understand? Uh-huh. Okay, well, here we go. Wish you a merry Christmas. No, oh, nicely done. Nicely done. Okay. Ah. We wish you a merry Christmas. Well played indeed. Christmas now. Got it? Got it. I don't believe you. Say what? Say 
We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Breakfast. No, Christmas, not breakfast. We must breakfast? cleanse the sun well. Christmas! 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 Well played. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Harton did not pull a hard time. He stayed until the very end as a nobile gentleman. So, uh, thank you very much you for the challenge, Trick or treat, no. Mr. Harton. Oh, 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 please. And with it, that, I think I'm going to call over. it a night. Uh, because I have to go to my mom's house and fix her computer. That's right, the stereotype is true when you become when your parents become older and elderly and infirm if you have any sort of computer literacy whatsoever you are their designated technical representative that is my life so anyway i gotta go take care of my mom's computer Greg Hartung says, I felt courteous this night. Well, thank you. IR Pixels followed. Thanks for following IR Pixels. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we're going to have to to, to to nix the smoke ships now, I suppose. Just because there are uh, no cigars to be seen. Uh, which is, of course, a bummer. But, you know, a tradition we shall fulfill many, many shows to come. It won't go away. It's just being delayed. I need to make another album, don't Thanks, I? Thanks, everyone, for coming to I have all these Christmas ideas. Party. All right, anyway, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to this week's tips. episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings. Thanks for all your patience, and thanks for playing me in Hearthstone. As always, I say at the end of these programs, be sure, my friends, that each and every one of you stays classy. See you next week. <laughs>